everybody, it's Sherry, and I'm with the Legend Actually podcast, and welcome back to another episode of Alleged Actually. Today is Monday. It's Easter Monday, and I hope you guys had a great weekend, a great Easter weekend, spending time with your family. Um, I did the same. We did not do Pop Culture Saturday because of that, because we had family in town, and we had a wonderful time. I trust you did too as well. So guys, before I get into my content, because today we will be recapping Real Housewives of Potomac but, um, Reunion Part 1, but before we get into that, I would like to get some admin stuff out of the way. So if you are here and you like reality TV recap content as well as pop culture, you found your home. So honey, just go ahead and subscribe to us, y'all. Let's don't prolong the inevitable. Hit that like button and then hit that notification bell. And also, I would like for you guys to put in the comments, like after I share with you guys my thoughts on the uh, reunion part one, put in the comments what you think. Where are you feeling about it? Um, do you disagree? Do you agree? What are your thoughts? Let's chat about it. Because like I said, we read all of your comments and we try to answer back to all of them. So put it in the comments. And then I also want to tell you guys, we will be in Atlanta. April 27th for the iHeart Black Effects Podcast Festival. Um, we will be in the building, not the building, the yards, the building, whatever, child. We will be there in networking capacity, not featured, but networking. So if you like our content and you follow us, come on out and meet us. We are happy to chat with you, get your feedback, take pics, whatever. Come on through. All right. So let's get into it. Real Housewives of Potomac Reunion Part 1. Now, I always say the first part just doesn't give much, but I'm going to just kind of take it back for Potomac. They gave on the first um, part of the reunion. They really gave. The looks, guys, let me just say, I thought the looks were spectacular. You know, like we talked about Back when Mary Medicine did theirs, uh, looks were a little shady on some parts and some were good, like that or heavenly, but no, ma'am. They all looked amazing in their black. It's like black and white. The ensembles were amazing. Um, The best look for me tonight or last night would go to Karen Huger. We're going to put it right up here. Yeah, I mean, we're going to show all the looks, but my vote is for Karen. Put it in the comments if you agree. Who would you guys think had the best look last night? I'd like to know. I'd like to hear from you guys. All right, guys. Let's get into it. So let's talk about the set. So the set were the big pictures from the Monarch magazine photo set. And honestly, they were beautiful. And I always thought, and I told you guys from the finale, I thought that was an impeccable job. How they capture the ladies, you know, um, Ashley is Dorothy Dandridge, Robin is Mariah Carey, we had Giselle is Beyonce, that's that and through. But the, the Karen is Lena Horn. I mean, it was gorgeous. So they had the big life-size pics behind them, and they had NECA, honey, as the grand dame. Okay. Anywho, Lauren. That was to help her feel better because she wasn't at the photo shoot. Anywho. All right, guys. So ladies come to set. Um Andy sets an intention of moving forward for the ladies. You know, he says that he would like for them to take this time to move forward. And to forge um, some forgiveness. Now, Andy is messy. But I will say for this particular reunion, part one, I think that he's echoing what we all have been feeling. We were all so disappointed in this season. Um, he would like to see the ladies, like, make amends get past some of the dumb stuff that has spilled over into the season from last. You know, like, 
you guys know that I said I initially started off on um, recapping Real Housewives of Potomac, and then I told you guys I would no longer do it because of the ignorance that I was witnessing between NECA and Dr. Wendy. Among other things, it was just boring. It was just not giving. The ladies were not progressing. It just wasn't giving me what I wanted it to give in order to bring the content to you guys. I didn't feel it was worth it. The last, the finale, the finale with Mia and Gordon's revelation and even the fight so that I could talk about how I think Bravo needs to change things made me come back to it. So that is why I am recapping this reunion, guys. And like I said, if I find that it does not serve you or me, it will be nixed and we will go on to something else. But Andy did say that he would like to start the tone of the reunion with the intention of moving forward and forgiveness, which I thought was great. Um, and Karen's like, pops in and says, yes, I have no doubt with the girls, you know, we can all get there. We can all get to forgiveness. And, you know, I think that everyone here, you know, can chime in. You have no doubt, you know, how Karen does. Cause remember she's Switzerland. And then Candace pipes in and says, yep, I can I can certainly get there with my accountability, Ashley as well. And then he asked, Andy asked Giselle and Robin, because they were so, so silent, where are you guys at in that? And they said, oh, no, yeah, we are looking forward to the accountability. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, sadly, child, they go to the scene where the ladies are on vacation and Dr. Wendy talks about who's in line with the Robin said about swallowing. I don't have time for this. Look, we are all grown. Um, I know that sometimes they do stuff for like shock value or, excuse me, God. Oh. But it's a little crass to me. I don't know. Anyway, that was Robin's thing. Robin said she swallows. Okay, Robin. It clearly it's not working. Um, but Karen then was asked how many sexual partners she had. And then she was like, Was that does that include my wet dreams? And Dr. Wendy said, No. And then here comes Robin. Child, somebody should have. Mm -mm. Someone should have warned her that you don't come from Karen when your house ain't right. She says, well, then that means you don't know how many partners you've had. And she said, no, that's one. Because the question was how many partners has she had in five years? And she was like, well, does that include what dreams? And then Ron was like, well, clearly that means you don't know how many partners you've had. And she was like, mm -mm, that's one. Okay. Whew. That was a read. So then um they go and they flash back to Robin's woes with Juan. The scene of the cheating allegations and people saying that, you know, she should stand up for herself, her deflection and saying that she didn't care. What do they want her to do? To cry, scream, yell at him. You know, Robin just had a bad season with that. You know, it's clear Juan is not on the up and up. Do we have receipts? Yes. Um, but Robin seems to be very, very clear on standing by her man. I'm not mad at that. I think everybody should just leave it alone. I mean, if you're okay to be cheated on, so am I. So then he says that he asked, did Juan, um, did Juan support her through the season? And she said no. And Andy asked, he certainly didn't because he's not here. He did not come to the reunion. He did not show up, y'all. And that's a bad sign. And he said, does she still believe that he doesn't cheat? with the Canadian and with the coach, Coach Bree. 
And she said, she can't say for sure. It goes to break, and it comes back, and then Robin says, based on what Juan says, she believes he didn't cheat. Okay. And then they ask him about, or they ask Robin about how he deletes his messages and DMs, and she's like, oh, you know, Juan is just, like, really ain't a lot cleaning his phone. And, you know... He, he, you know, he does that. Okay. Whew. And then Candace says, Robin. So one of the issues they had, so Candace, uh, Candace ch uh, chimes in and says, you know, that Robin kept her info about her marriage um, to herself, but wanted others to share what they were going through. And there was a flashback to her confronting Karen about the blue-eyed man that she missing out with, you know, like, why was she forthcoming about that? And it's true. You know, Robin did do her due diligence on trying to come for people's marriage or things in their life that they weren't being forthcoming with. Meanwhile, child, her husband is a whole hot mess. And listen, I'm not, I'm not blaming Robin, but my thing is this. You can't come from other people and then live your life the way you did on the season. It's hard to watch, guys. I mean, Juan clearly is disrespecting Robin. Clearly. I mean, receipt or no receipt, um, I don't think that it's up for debate. I think that it's clear. Who goes to announce along with another woman? I mean, it just is so crazy. It's like, he has a whole wife. Y'all, I can't. And I am happy, you know, because we have found out that Robin will not be on next season. Neither will Candace. Actually, I think Robin needs to take a break. I think she needs to get her life together because it is hard to watch. And if you don't want to talk about it, you should get off the show. And I'm glad she is because there is literally no excuse for the way Juan behaved, not only in his, you know, philandering ways, but also the way when she would call him to get support when she was like going through with the ladies, how he was so mean and short with her, like, oh, I'm an easy big person, da da da. I felt but like a lot of what she was going through was because of him, guys. And I just did not feel he had any support or love for her. It just seems it's giving that they are together for the love of the boys and for the love of family. You do guys know, and I've told you this before on episodes past, that Juan's parents passed away and that Robin's parents basically adopted him, you know, like kind of brought him into the fold. It just seems like they're more brotherly, sisterly, in my opinion. More to follow. Okay. So, child, then she bring, Candace brings up where Robin had brought up some things um, with some bloggers that she wanted to talk about um, that Giselle wasn't happy about. Uh, she brought the big uh, poster board with the text messages on there. Apparently, it was a group text. And she said that... Um, it was proprietary information. And of course, being the two of them as they are, um, Giselle defended her, says she wasn't mad. Now, what information it was, was unclear. Um, but we did get into talking about how Candace was still upset with Robin about spending the story on Chris with Giselle. And not so much spinning the story, but not being there to defend. She felt like her and Robin were friends and Giselle made the accusation that Chris asked her to go into a room to talk um, where it made Giselle uncomfortable. Um, Andy asked, because he's really trying to forge these relationships to get better. Because honestly, guys, if he doesn't, there will be no show. And so Andy's really doing his due diligence, and I respect that. And you know what, guys? Honestly, I'm going to say that I've never seen him do that on a reunion before. This was different. 
this means that Potomac was really at a crossroads and something had to give, or I think they're teeter-tottering on the cusp of perhaps getting um, possibly disbanded, like canceled. They have done some sh uh, cash shakeups, but it is a lot. You know, we have some stubborn women on there. And I understand their stances. Giselle shouldn't have said what she said if it wasn't founded. But at some point, if this is your job and this is your coworker, I mean, you can agree to disagree and like, you know, work, whatever. But guys, I was just giving a lot. Um, So... Andy asked what Robin needs from her, meaning from Candace. And Robin really, you know, because Robin is a dance arounder of a question. We all know that. So basically, Mia chimes in and says, well, what she really needs from Candace is accountability. And what Candace needs from Robin is transparency, which is a good, honestly, a good revelation. That is what they truly need. You know, Candace picked out the whole <laughs> triangle napkin before the question, you know, the whole nine. And um, Giselle was like, oh, God, not again. You know, bring it out. And she was like, F you, Giselle, F you, Giselle. It's just, between those two, I honestly don't see it getting any better. So I really think that Giselle leaving was probably the best thing. I really do. Um... Then we go on to Karen's triple 20 party. And Karen admits, oh, they asked Karen, like, has she had anything done? Karen looked good. First of all, like I said, when I talked about the looks, honey, Karen gets the looks hands down. She had the cute little pixie cut, too. It was really, really cute. And they asked her, has she had anything done, any work? And she has had a facelift, y'all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and quite frankly it looks good she looked amazing um so then Andy asked if Candace thinks that she's a fence hopper and she says yes so then Andy brings up the event that Karen had for the women for the um women that had been abused sexually um, in their past or current and um, that was like a very sweet moment for the ladies there are so many women and if you all think about it there's probably a time in your life that you could say that even though you might have not been assaulted maybe abused or harassed um, I think it was a safe space for women to tell their stories I thought that was beautiful that Karen brought that to the show and he he talked about that and then you know Maya's story came out which was I thought obviously wonderful it gave me a new outlook on Mia and then also between Mia and Deborah and so he I'm sorry not Deborah Jacqueline and so Andy asked how are Mia and Jacqueline doing and she said you know since then we have reconciled and we speak every day and we're good so that's amazing and then Candace was asked about her comments about her being a colorist, or about Giselle being a colorist and causing death threats because of it. So, guys, if you remember season last, and like I said, I am not mad at Candace per se because Giselle put out those allegations on her husband, Chris, as if he had, like, bum-rushed her in a room and, like, made her feel uncomfortable. When he indeed asked her to come in the room to talk, she felt uncomfortable, and I, I'm going to honor that, y'all. I'm going to honor that, but the narrative was such that she was trying to make her husband seem predatory and not faithful to Candace. So Candace has had her issues with Giselle, rightfully so. I mean, that's a lot. Um, and in the midst of that, when they were on the reunion last season, she called her, you know, with your white features and, you know, you can say these things and these are white privilege. Well, with that, apparently social media had a Phil's day. And I'm sorry, my voice is a little out, guys. <laughs> But 
she had said that, you know, with that being said, you know, she kind of eluded that Giselle was a colorist and that because of that, Giselle said she had had multiple death threats. Yeah, I think that's crazy. Now, I love me a good reality TV show, but fans, let's don't do that. You know what I mean? Like, really? That's where we're going? It's just, that's a lot. Um, So she was really upset with Candace because apparently throughout last season to the season, Candace has been on the warpath on social media, liking posts that have been... um less than favorable to Giselle and her daughters and it wasn't right so I'm with that I think she shouldn't have done that so and you know so then Robin asked Candace about the deal with Chris about the receipts that came from the young lady that said she was his mistress the picture of his limp penis um and some audio messages it was alleged that after that this woman said that it wasn't true in fact that you know but then she came back and said that it actually was true and that she was forced to say it wasn't and child i don't know i mean that's some tosh k stuff um for what we're gonna say now we're gonna allege that chris has been accused but it certainly hasn't been proven and the fact that they made that a whole storyline, not this season, but last, was kind of wrong. So, I don't know. Uh, all right. And then after that, Andy tries to get some forward move it, movement with Candace and Giselle. He wants each of them to be accountable for something, right? And so Giselle says she apologizes for the sneaky link comment when she said that when Chris asked her to come in the room was giving him her sneaky link vibes. And y'all, we all know that sneaky link means that if he had got her in the room, that perhaps he would have tried to make a move on her. That's not okay. And Candace said that... Um, She really didn't give much, you know. She Candace is very bitter, which is why I said it was better that she left the show for a while to take some time and kind of regroup, you know. And like she does not just have the show, she has her music, she has um her acting career, she has done her due diligence is using this platform to help build her brand. So I don't know. I mean, she seems extremely angry, y'all. I don't know. So she did say that she did apologize for her colorist comments and the fact that her and her kids had death threats. She did apologize for that. So it was something, right, guys? And then, so basically, on the next part, they talk about the fact that Candace had a lot of tweets on the things that she ranted about with Giselle. And they were like, you know, the fact that you like them maybe alluded to or added to the fact that, you know, Giselle's having a hard time with social media and death threats. Um And so she did, and again, I told you what she did. Candace did say that she was accountable is the fact that she called her white looking and caused her to get the death threats. Threats. So then Robin is asked by Andy to say three nice things about Karen. So, because I mean, there's this like beef between Karen and Robin, y'all, and I don't even get it because, like, why? Because Robin is, like, so checked out this season. Like, why are they having a beef? My thought process is that Robin had come for her hard last season, the season before, like, when she moved. And she brought the pizza to the place. And then last season, she was all about the blue-eyed man. 
child, I don't can't say I blame Karen too much. You know what I mean? But she said that Karen was witty, that she absolutely looked great for her age, and she was a good mother. So Andy asked Robin the same to say three th nice things about Karen. And Robin says she's a good friend to... Nope. Yeah, Karen said about Robin that she's a good friend to Giselle. She's intelligent and interestingly strategic with the woe is me cries. <laughs> that was shady. But she said overall she's a nice person. So, okay, there's that. And then Robin asked Ryan or Karen if she was with someone saying if she was okay with someone that saying she was in cahoots to take down someone's husband. And Robin says she can't see any middle aged grown woman when it comes to her husband, whatever. So what she was trying to say was, you know, Karen didn't have her back when Giselle was, I mean, Candace was basically putting her out there saying that she was in cahoots with Giselle on talking about Chris and, you know, disparaging his name regarding the uh, mistress and, you know, her, her husband being in the midst of an affair. And Karen really said nothing, child. She, she gave her nothing. So then, y'all, the biggie happens. Gordon enters the room. Amia's on the phone with Mr. Ink. And, honey, they're on FaceTime. And Gordon speaks. So apparently from the finale to now, there's been some changes. Okay. And... So then Annie talks about Mia and her crumbling house, um, the failing business. They were removed from the family business by his, by Gordon's brother. Me and Gordon talked about divorce and he wanted to make an agreement that benefited both. In that scene, you know, we talked about this last time. This was prior to that scene from last um, week, though. He said that if we were going to, because she had, Clearly did mention divorce twice before we got to that scene um, last week. Which leads me to believe that, you know, Mia was ready to bounce long before. I think Gordon was holding on, trying to find something that would suit them both, that would benefit them, and that would keep them together for their kids. I think Mia was pretty checked out. Now, you know, like people say, oh, she's a gold digger. She was this. They had an open marriage. And I think they did have a open marriage. But I do think that Gordon was not forthcoming with her on everything that happened with the family business. I think that from what I have done my research on and the receipts I've gotten is Gordon gambled away a lot of his money. And the family thought he was a liability to the company and they let him go. Now, again, if you're married for love, none of these things matter. You will you know, rally with your man, whatever. But in Mia's case, they had an agreement. And he didn't hold up to his side. So I don't know, y'all. I mean, uh, I'm on the fence. I think I felt really bad for Gordon last week. Um, but I also think that those conversations were had between them. And I do think that Gordon had a, some things that he did not, that he was not forthcoming with me on regarding his family business and their money. And to lose money like that and whatever. And I'm not saying, even if she did marry for money, and I'm not saying she did or she didn't, she says she might have. But let's be clear. Even if she didn't, and you had a businessman that you were living in this lifestyle and he had to go down here because of something that seemingly was on him and that he doesn't take accountability for it and he's suing and it's all weird and he's like not owning his part in it. It is off-putting. I, I, I gather that. I do. I totally do. So, uh, I mean, it is what it is. So, 
in the interim, then they flash back to the scene with Eddie and Dr. Wendy when Eddie was talking about how Gordon had reached out to him, wanting to reach out to a group text to also get to the why. So let me know what Mia was up to. So then they talk about with um, Mia that Ink still thinks that Jeremiah, her son, is his son. And yeah, that's still the case. And they even talk about, y'all, that Mia, she lives in an apartment in D.C. in um, a penthouse. And Gordon is living in Charlotte right now, but he's going to move in a penthouse or something right around the cross from her. And, you know, they talk about how her and Ink were sweethearts in Atlanta. But they also talked about the fact that you know, with going back to Jeremiah, her son, that Ink actually tried to take him because he really believes he's her son, his his son. And um that's crazy, y'all. And then when he brought up, he came up to the house and you know, tried to talk to him and still believes that he's the son. Like I said, that was stated, and yeah. Um, that's basically where the episode ended. I don't know. Y'all, all right, here's my thoughts on RHOP, okay? So I got through the recap. Let's just talk. No, let's just talk. Um, it was not a good season. The last episode brought it back to life. Our biggest things to talk about are me and Gordon and the Mr. Ink thing. But aside from that, the ladies that let themselves get that divided, Giselle and Robin, you know, Robin being gone is a great thing. I think that the only way this franchise is going to be um, saved is if they really put the hammer down on these ladies. You know, you have to realize that you are still on TV to entertain and to pan to your fans. I'm not saying to be fake because I don't like fake storylines. But what I do say is the distaste for each other and like, uh, I guess we fixed that with Candace not being on there anymore. But I mean, it could happen again. I think that they need to know that they really work for someone and it's really not that serious. I think that there needs to be a very massive clause in their contracts that says you do not bring friends that are not affiliated with the show to events that could possibly cause harm to other castmates. I also think that Giselle needs to come to Jesus, y'all. I'm still not happy with her. And with me and Gordon... They saved the season. I don't like the way that the children were put in the middle, particularly the son Jeremiah with the paternity being in question. But y'all, that's what people tune in. I don't know. But let's just say this. Reunion part one wasn't bad. I'm going to tune in for part two. I'm going to keep um, recapping. I'll bring it back to you guys on next week and we'll see how we feel about it. You know what I mean? And, you know, I told you, if it doesn't serve us, I'll stop and we'll go on over to Martha's Vineyard. But for now, put in the comments, what did you guys think about reunion part one? Let me know. Who did you think had the best look? Because I'm down for Karen Huger. And let me know what you thought about the Candace and Giselle beef and Robin's antics, child. What do you think? What did you even think about the way that Andy was questioning him? That was a very different questioning than he normally does for Housewives. So what do you guys think that means? I'm almost wondering if Real Housewives of Tony is on the cutting floor of being canceled, period. I think. Guys, put it in the comments. I don't know. Let me know what you think. But as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Now, we are 
in the midst of reaching our next goal of 3,000 subs. Guys, please, if you like it, of course, hit the like button. And then share it with the masses, please. Share it with your friends and family. When I find something good, I like to share it with my friends and family. So share it, guys. Share it. And let's just see. We really, we are close, but we really need your help. Get us to 3,000 subscribers. So thank you so much. And remember, guys, hit that notification button. That way, whenever we upload a video or we go live, you'll be the first to know. So thank you so much, guys. As always, for tuning in. We appreciate every last one of our subscribers. Thank you, fam. Thank you, Alleja. Actually, our actualizers. And um, for now, I'm going to say goodbye. I'll be back on Thursday with Bria recapping Married at First Sight. Come on back. Let's talk about it. Thank you guys for your time. Bye.